Hi, I'm Joe Langford. I'm a therapist and a sex educator and a dad in Seattle. Uh, I've been working with teenagers, mostly boys, for about 20 years. My main speciality is that intersection with adolescence and sexuality and technology and where those things kind of bump into each other and collide every once in a while. I've been working with kids for about 20 years. And I've devoted a branch of my private practice into kind of proactive sex education for families and agencies and kids. Spare Me the Talk is the book that I wrote. It's written for parents and for teenage boys between the ages of 14 and 24. And it kind of covers everything that a guy needs to know in order to how to navigate those three points. It's a guy's guide to relationships, sexuality, and growing up. Well, I think that anything that you can do to give them a container for their behavior is really helpful. So things like having a on-purpose media night at home, having an on-purpose non-media night at home can be really helpful. Um, I remember when phones used to plug into the wall all the time and it was kind of sort of rude to talk to someone before 9 a.m. and it was kind of sort of rude to talk to somebody after 9 p.m. I like the 9 to 9 rule. I don't think that needs to change just because we carry our phones around in our pockets now. On that note, don't let your kids carry their phone around in their pockets with them all the time. Teach them how to unplug in social situations especially, like no tech at the dinner table. Don't talk on the phone while you're standing in line. Teaching them how to unplug at night as well. Um, having a common area maybe in the house where everyone plugs their devices in at night and says goodnight to them and then goes on and it'll be ready for them in the morning can be a really good thing as well. And you can do physical things to limit their use as well on their gaming systems or even on their devices through apps like Custodia where you can actually set times of days where certain aspects of the devices or the game system just won't work. That can be really helpful too. I think good old fashioned talking is probably the best route to go. Starting earlier with kids, like earlier than you think you need to start with some of these conversations is really good. Um, it makes it a lot less awkward when they're 13, 14, 15, 16, if they just kind of learn when they're eight, nine, 10, 11, that having regular conversations about sometimes awkward stuff is just how it goes with mom and dad. Making sure that they know above all that you are a trusted resource and that you are available and you want them to come to you. Specifically, make sure that they know that you don't want them Googling new words or new ideas or new behaviors. When they hear about them on the playground, you want them to come to you first and then you guys can look it up together. As a parent, a good rule of thumb is to make sure that you keep your poker face on, especially when kids are telling you something maybe scandalous or shocko or something you weren't expecting to hear from them. You can always have your freak out later. If we freak out when they're talking to us, it gives them like the message that, oh, this is not okay to talk about, or oh, this is too scary, or oh, dad can't handle this, maybe. We don't want to give them that message. When talking with kids, it's really important to remember that kids hate the like eye contact one-on-one -on -one thing, stare at me and have a conversation about your thoughts and feelings. Kids tend to hate that, especially boys. But if you can do something shoulder to shoulder with them, like playing a video game or driving a car, kids can really relax and open up a lot. Another good tip is to remember that sometimes kids, especially the middle school age, get really resistant to talking about their own selves, their own days, their own feelings. But they can talk about a third thing, like the song lyrics, or the plot of a TV show, or those upworthy articles that always seem to make their way onto our Facebook pages. Those can be great springboards for starting conversations with kids and can help make it less awkward. Sometimes it can be nice to sort of play on their strengths and on that idea that they want more responsibility, that they kind of want to be treated like a grown up. Um, if anyone who's ever heard me talk or read my book, like you know that I'm a big fan of structure, of contracts, of checklists. That works really well with kids. And, but um, there's nothing wrong with putting them in the driver's seat every once in a while and letting the kid tell you how often they think they should clean their room or how many you know, minutes or hours they should spend a night doing homework or media and kind of put them in the driver's seat with that and help them empower them to make some of those choices. They're also much less likely to complain about the consequences if they get to be party to help kind of create the consequences of what happens to them if they don't clean their room on Saturday or what happens to them if they don't do enough homework this week. This is the big developmental stage of middle school. 
clearly at this age, around 11, their friends become way more important than their family and they kind of start to pull away. They want to pull away. The biggest mistake that parents can make at this time is to allow them to do that. Let me be clear, I'm not advocating for helicopter parenting, but this is them taking what they know and what they've learned or what they think they know and what they think they've learned and taking it out into the world to see how they fare. They're asserting their independence just like they did when they were little and they would start doing some walking and they'd fall on their butts or they'd try to learn how to ride their bikes and they bloodied their knee. It's totally age appropriate, it's totally developmentally appropriate and it's actually really important both for them and for parents to be able to do this part. Your job as a parent is to just stay nearby, check in with them, piss them off tomorrow by checking in with them again, and just keep doing that. Just don't leave. It's their job description to tell you to go away. That's not really what they want, but that's the tool they use to start getting some of that independence. Your job as a parent is to not fall for it and to stick with them. So let them fall, let them bloody their knee, let them get their own bandages and start wrapping themselves up. But when they look up from doing that, let them see you tracking them and know that you're there. That is a huge question because there's, for every kid, there's eight different answers. Um, kids need to be able to balance the academic rigors of school with some extracurricular, either creative or physical activities as well. Um, they don't need three other creative or physical activities as well. Just one would be great. A big picture, I think there should be nothing, including homework, that should prevent your kid from spending warm human social contact with other kids their age. Other things to keep in mind, especially as kids get into middle school and certainly high school, is doing work around limiting their media use, especially at night. Um, we want to make sure that kids get a decent amount of sleep. Parental involvement in the school years, especially into high school, is extremely important for kids in terms of keeping their stress level down and keeping their focus going, keeping track of what our kids are doing and, and letting them know that we're there to support them and making sure the kids have a breakfast that has protein in it can make uh, a huge difference in their day. If you do happen to notice that your kid's academic performance or social performance for that matter is dropping pretty significantly, it's a good time to just check in with them and make sure that there isn't a social thing going on. It could be something related to depression or if you have a family history of any sort of attention deficit issue, it might be a time to check that out as well.